clean ourselves. Peacocking. So we look perfect for the camera. Somebody said the other day that I need to shave my... I'm surprised no so, one said nothing to me. Somebody put on the quote, on that thing about that, on the quote Buy video. a razor and shaving Yeah, foam. on top of the price, add a, add a tin of shaving foam and a razor, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> I'm going to keep it like this deliberately now. I'm grow it into like a yeah. I'm grow it, yeah. <laughs> Fuck Flat you. Air. Yeah. <laughs> right, anyway. Um, now. <laughs> right. You're now on the van insurance, all right? Um, so keep that with you or in fact just chuck it in the glove box if you want that's now yours all right cool beans um right and also your workwear has turned up all right so you're now donning the thomas Nagy corporate colors all right <laughs> we're not on the stock exchange yet but we're not yet there. but soon so there's all your gear so well might as well put it on now i guess yeah that's better awesome Way! all right <laughs> let's go to work Good morning everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome back friends. Now we're over in Greenwich doing this house rewire which you saw earlier in the week uh, where I asked you to put your prices for what you think you do the job for. So uh, me and Tom are here now and um, we're just, uh, Dave's just gone round, he's just sort of lifted up all the floorboards uh, just so we can start running in our new cabling and stuff. Um, and one of the things which was, uh, was a bit of an argument, it's sort of a debate wasn't it? It was, yeah. a, it was an argument that just kind of... I don't really see the reason why it was an argument um, that you, you shouldn't be using these uh, Q-Tech, you shouldn't be using these voltage pens like uh, Dave's got in his hand there to confirm that things are off. Um, which I, I find a bit of a nonsense because I'll give you, this is, the perfect, this is a classic example why I think they're such a fundamentally brilliant tool to use because we've just turned the fuse board off now so this flat is completely dead. Um, but what you've got to remember is we've got to cut all, all this cabling out. But there's a flat below us, so all of our cabling is dead, but if you put that wand, so most of it is dead, but because there's a flat downstairs, the wiring for their flat is still up here, because it runs through the same floor, floor you know, through the same floorboards. So, the, you know, you've got to be so careful, you can't just assume that when you turn the power off at the fuse board, you can't just take a pair of cars and just go, you know, Gangam style and just start cutting everything out because you'll end up cutting out, the, cutting off the power downstairs and you'll end up fucking damaging your snips. Yeah, um, you put some holes in them. Exactly, which then begs, you know, they're, they are a fundamentally excellent tool for any electrician. I don't understand what the problem with them is. If you apply a bit of common sense with them, they're a fantastic tool to have. Um, you know, so it's just one of those things. If you, do, if you are doing flat, you know, if you're doing flat rewires, uh, especially flats because obviously they're, they're stacked one on top of each other. If you are doing them, keep one on you and just run, your, just run it over the cabling. I mean here for example, we could actually take that cover off and test it. But if that junction box wasn't there, you, you wouldn't be able to test. You'd, you'd have to use a, 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 a magic wand. Just a worthwhile thing that I think you know, it's a brilliant tool to have in your bag. So anyway, we're going to crack on. We'll see you in a bit. So we're just in the middle of running these data cables in. Um, because they want data in every room and uh, we're running the power this side there's water pipes in the middle here for the central heating and then we're just running data this side just to try and keep, give them a little bit of separation so to speak um, but one thing somebody um, this was I mean this was a couple of months ago in a video somebody mentioned uh, the old bitumen rubber cable um, I can't remember the official name for it now that shit rubber cable this stuff uh, vul what's it? Vulcanized, what's it? Vulcanized rubber or something. It's called vulcanized insulated rubber, and it's horrible cable. Uh, but somebody was mentioning if you uh, if you come across this during uh, an EICR or something, can you still uh, can you still mark it as satisfactory or pass, as it's known in the real world? Uh, yeah, my personal answer is no. I'm I'm just of the opinion that if you come across it, you should just mark it down as uh, as unsatisfactory because. Uh, this stuff has, you know, it's more than done its lifespan. Um, there is an argument. Some people say that you could, you know, you could mark it down as a C3. But personally, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not, <laughs> I'm just not, I'm not of the opinion you should do that. 
Um, I mean, this, this bit here, this was all still in service, mind, uh, this stuff. We've actually just disconnected it. This stuff is still quite flexible. This one isn't too bad. But was it this one? Yeah, this one here. This stuff is, um, I mean, you can see how this was still in service on the lighting circuit. But you can see how brittle this stuff is. I mean, it just breaks like that. This one's just, I don't know why. Some of them are really flexible. Maybe it's a different compound, a different material it's made from. They feel the same, but this one has just become very, it's just become so brittle. Uh, but this was still in service up on the lighting circuit. So it's, um, personally, I, I, I class it as a fail. Uh, but I mean, everyone's different. I mean... It's very easy to be persuaded um, into passing something, uh, sorry, uh, making something satisfactory if, um, you know, when the, when the buyer of a house or something is there and the pressure's there, oh, but, you know, we need to move in, blah, 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 and the pressure's there, and you, you sort of get... It is difficult to not get sucked into it. Um, and we've all, you know, we've all been there in that position where you're sort of pressured into passing something just because you know, an exchange has got to happen or there's something major resting on it and you just feel like a prick to, you know, to say, look, sorry, actually it hasn't met the criteria. Um, you know, it's, it, is, it is difficult. It's a difficult position and, you know, I'm sure any electrician, we can all unanimously group together and say we've all been there, you know. Um, but it's just one of those things you've just got to you just got to stand firm and just say look no it's not you know it's not good enough and it on this occasion it hasn't met the you know the criteria that's needed i mean last month i did about god i did over half a dozen eicrs i say did them i quoted for them didn't get any of them you know but does that mean my pricing's too high i mean it could be i mean obviously it means they found someone cheaper to do it that's what it does mean but Am I going to change my pricing? No, I won't, because EICRs are one of those things that, um, you know, you've got to be really, you know, you've got to be, it's not the sort of thing you can go and do an EICR at four o'clock in the afternoon. You know, fuck that. You just, <laughs> to do one, you've got to be on a fresh head, you know. To do it properly does take, it does take a lot of time. So if people want to do 100 pound drive-by surveys, you fucking crack on. Knock yourself out, son, because I ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah, because it's very easy to do an EICI if you're just doing a fucking drive-by survey, you know, and there's a load of that shit you've just, you know, because you haven't taken any of the, the covers or accessories off and there's this shit and the house burns down three months later. Well, you know, he's going to get dragged over the coals for it, you know? Anyway, what do I know? I'll bring the switch wire over to that furthest pendant and then we'll just work our way back to the third pendant. Yeah, so if we drag two switch wires from here, yeah, yeah. one will go, yeah, so one will go to these pendants and then the and other one's one will do go track. Down. Yeah. And we've got a three, yeah, all right, we're good. You are covered in shit, mate, fair play. It's a noble effort, I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm impressed. Ah. <laughs> oh. Ah, go fuck yourself. What happened? So I dropped the drill. Oh. Have you marked up which was which? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right. Okay, I'm going to pull one. All right. What one's that? The, the drum? one that's on the drum. That's the drum. So that one's going down to the end. Yeah, that'll be the furthest switch. And this it? one is the single this one. This is the one which you've cut. Yeah, that's the switch wire for the pendants. How you doing? All right. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's just... Ah, did you... That's the other thing. Did you pikey my floorboard lifter when you went to that um, car wash the other day for that? You did. I fucking needed it here. Shit. I was cursing your name. Oh, bollocks. Yeah, I pikeyed it. But uh, it was in the tool bag and I forgot. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even use it there. We haven't actually got a second one, have we? Well, that does remind me, uh, Matthew at ITS, if you'd be so kind as to send me out one of those, I'd really appreciate it because we've only got one and Dave keeps pikey in it, so uh, if you could pop one in the post, I'd really appreciate it. Please, my best friend. <laughs> Please, sir, may Please, I have sir, some can more? I have some more? You want more? <laughs> more? <laughs> we are currently wiring, well, we're de-wiring the loft. We're removing all this smeg. 
out of the loft, all the old 12 volt lighting and stuff. And uh, there's a lot of cable which has come out. I'll take you downstairs in a second and show you. Tons of cables come out of this place. You wouldn't think such a small place, but we're just loosely running in the new cabling, as you can see, as you can see here. We've got to clip it in yet. We've just run it in between the joists. Where's the last pendant? Somewhere. Have you drilled it out yet? I don't know. Have a look. Uh, no, I haven't. You got the drill? Yeah. That bit's going to be boiling. Oh, you fuck. <laughs> Maybe had a... <laughs> drilled a load of joists yesterday because somebody in the comments recommended to use these drill bits with the, uh, with the, screw, the, the screw head on them. And they are good. But of course, you keep your Bosch through multiple joists and it's so easy with these. Tom put the drill down. Lent over. He lent over. Moved the cable. A fucking great burn right across the bottom of his arm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the only downside to get properly hot. That's the old, um, to summon the servant system. It's part of it there, because we've got it, all the mechanisms over there as well for it. The old bell, yeah. the old bell pulls for the butlers and stuff. Yeah, look, that's what it would have been connected to something. Yeah, up here. And there's some in the floorboards downstairs. It's the old uh, bell pulls for when they had, uh, when this was all one huge house and they had the bell pulls for the butlers and stuff. It's just here. There's actually some better examples downstairs, but you can see over there the old bell pulls and how they worked. And they had the, the handles downstairs, gave it a ring, and up came the butler with his tray of gin or whatever it was. Can you just poke something into the... I can push something into that hole if you wish. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. Morning, sailor. <laughs> Cheeky. I can't You're... see no light. I don't know. Ah! Did shit drop on you? Yes. Okay, so it's on this side. That's ah, it. there it is. It's quite small. Yeah, it... that's, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah. So up here, like I was saying, about drilling holes in the <coughs> sorry, drilling holes in the joists and stuff. This is basically how to do it. We've got to clip this all in yet, but these joists are quite narrow little joists. So we're just trying to keep the holes, you know, as small as we can all the way through. And we just, we've got to run it under because he wants to, he wants to board all over this. So same again here, just trying to, we'll just get the hoover up here, hoover this little bit of crap out and that's it. God, let's get the fuck out of here for a minute. It's... Yeah, let the dust settle from that far past. <laughs> And that's our pile, that's what I've actually pulled out. You'd be amazed how much stuff actually comes out of this place. I, I genuinely didn't think this much cable would have come out here because as we've been pulling the new cabling in, we've had to remove the old stuff first. We want to try and reuse as many of the existing drill holes as we can. Well, what we're going to do actually, because we spoke about this, is we're going to weigh it in. Um, and I generally don't bother weighing in cable because it's just not worth, it's, you know, we haven't got anywhere to keep it and store it and you know, stockpile it and stuff. But I'll weigh this in. Um, I'll take it down on Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, and uh, how much we got for it, you know, just for mixed copper price. Last time I took a van, I took the van, that black Renault you saw outside. When I took that, and that was, that was a full van load, and I got about 450 quid. 450, 460, it was somewhere around there. It was a good price I got for it, but I mean, that's probably only, I don't know, 50 quid, maybe, I don't know. I mean, 50 quid better than a kick in the teeth, but. We've been, last couple of weeks, we've been coming back and forth from Greenwich, doing just quotes and shit. And every time we come back through the Blackwall Tunnel, there's two lanes. There's the lane, what's the, what's the height of the first lane? It's like 4.8 meters. Yeah, so it's, it's really high. All the Arctics and stuff. And there's the lane next to it, the shorter lane, for cars and like vans and stuff. And it's, it's 2.7 <laughs> meters, I'm sure it is 2.7. If think... that is written just in front of us, I can't quite see it yet. And we've, see it soon. we've always stayed in the left-hand lane because this van is two point... Well, I've always thought it's about 2.7 metres, but we measured it the other day and it's 2.55-ish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somewhere around there. But theoretically, if we stay in... We should clear it. We should. We'll only have about 100 mil, about maybe 150 mil to play with, but we should clear it. So we're going to give it, <laughs> we're going to give it a go. <laughs> 450 yards. Yeah, you watch it, we'll go under it, I'll take the whole fucking roof rack off. <laughs> the whole lot. Yeah. Apparently three people break down inside the tunnel every day. Run out of fuel. According like to that. last year's statistics, I think yeah. it was like 1,200 people or something. <coughs> We're just holding up the statistics, that's all. The first, the first height barrier is rubber, isn't it? It's just a yes, rubber. It's like plastic, I think. 
So if we do hit it, we've <laughs> basically got to move straight over to the left lane because the next one's the <laughs> steel one. They're concrete. reinforced steel ones, yeah. Fuck, here we go. Here we go. Does it fit? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there's about a foot. <laughs> there's not that. There's a bit there, mate. There is, there is a little bit. 